Good morning. Please stand and join in the opening hymn, Jesus, Lord, We Look to Thee, found on page 562 of the United Methodist Hymn Book, and we will be singing verses 1, 3, 4, and 6. Join me in the call to worship. Mm -hmm. Who among you is seeking the wisdom of God? Who among you is seeking God's bright and holy truth? Who among you is seeking a spirit filled life? God grants God's wisdom generously to all who ask. Please join me in the opening prayer. Our creator and sustainer, we confess that we are not always strong like the trees planted by the water's edge. Sometimes we are weak and indecisive. When the first big wind comes, we lean and break. We cut the edge instead, ready to fight our battles. By our silence and busyness, we let wickedness and ugliness fester and flourish. Today, Lord, forgive us for covet and lie. Don't let us get caught up in the things that displease you. Heal us, direct our paths, do for us the peace we so desperately crave. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It is so nice to see all of you. And I'm sorry about the beginning. We did not have PowerPoint, but we have the bulletin, so it is okay. So um, for our announcement, please look at the back of the bulletin. Uh, today, we will have a reception of members it's Fukui family, Cecilia and his uh, children, Emily and Charlie B. The father is Charlie. He is uh, a met. He was a Methodist from Kearney. He was inactive. He was a youth leader, but now hopefully through Cecilia, he will come back. And please join us for Thanksgiving lunch after worship. The 
catering is uh, you know ready by 11:30 so they will pick it up 11:30 so we might have to wait around 12 so while we are waiting uh, please enjoy each other and uh, talk to each other and uh, just enjoy the company of of each other September 20, 22, 24, Prayer Warriors Meeting resumes 6 p.m. All are invited to participate. Uh, we are just reading Upper Room and we are praying our prayer list and those who are uh, um, giving their prayer request. September 20 and 23, the ESL continues at 7 p.m. through uh, Teacher Ashok. Thank you, teacher. And uh, I believe Zoom will be open for ESL2 uh, with SOWI. September 20, tomorrow is the conference paperwork deadline. SPRC, the council chair, the pastor, all our reports will have to be submitted uh, online via ARENA. So we are, uh, Elmer, Melissa, and me, we have to submit. Fridays, the youth hang out at 7 p.m. here in the church. And on October 19, we will have our church conference via Zoom with Reverend Williams. Yesterday, we had a memorial service for uh, Bill Sinkowitz here. And if you want to uh, look back for the service, it is on Facebook on our um, website. Also, happy birthday uh, Friday to Kuya Jerome Pura. Yesterday, Joshua's birthday and my birthday. So happy birthday to us. And Josh, Joshua is in Colorado. It's their state. So uh, <laughs> they visited their state. So we're uh, praying for Joshua and uh, Phoebe's um, protection and uh, enjoyment of the nature. Also, happy birthday today to Mrs. Stephanie Poransky, and uh, she's extending her greetings. And uh, yesterday, the uh, Dale Sinkowitz would like to thank uh, the church for opening the church for the, me the memorial. Bill Sinkowitz was um, cremated. He will not be buried for now. He will be in their home uh, in Springfield. So please continue to pray for Dale and her family. And also uh, tomorrow is Eliza Lim's birthday on 25 is Todd and Kayla 26. Four anniversaries coming is Ed and Jerry Keller on the 27th. If you have any prayer requests, I would like to uh, hear it and let us all pray for it. Yes, Pastor Don. Thank you, Pastor Don. Any more prayer requests? Mike Russo and Mike Johnston. Right then, Mike Johnston. And um, if we don't have any more uh, prayer list, I would like to ask all of you to um, join me in our uh, prayer. Gracious and loving God, our creator, as we gather today in your name, may we continue to hear your word, 
may the scripture fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls. And Lord, we lift up to you all our family members and friends that's in prayer list. We lift up to you all our healthcare workers, all essential workers, first responders, our teachers, our students, our parents. We lift up to you, Mike Johnston, Wendy, Baboods, Carmelita, Leonardo, Kathy, Rich, Karen, Monica, Rich, Steve, Irma, Mila Green, Dale, Dave, Robin Tarulo, Greg, Mary Catherine, Donna, Bella, Pastor Bill Noll, Steve Nagy, Robert Sasala, David, Agnes Andriola, Mary Thomas, Rosalyn Diaz, Kyle Vitug, Christopher Gutierrez, Mike Russo. We leave up to you what's going on in Afghanistan, U.S. citizens, friends, and all people there with arms or with no arms, raging for war or wanting for peace. You know their hearts, what's going on in their minds, their struggles, their suffering. We leave up to you, all people in Afghanistan right now, Lord God. Help them. Use people, use us, use the government to help them. Help them experience true peace. Help them experience peace in themselves and peace with each other. We leave up to you the refugees, our U.S. borders. We don't know what to pray, Lord. But you know what's best. We live of all the refugees that they don't have homes, they don't have food, they're apart from their family. And the government, you know, Lord, we don't know. We don't know what's best for them. We just ask for your wisdom to help our government. Help, help them, help all the refugees. They are suffering right now. So, Lord, embrace them with your love. Use people to, to help them. We live up to you, Haiti. We live up to you, those who still are suffering from the storm Ida, Louisiana, our communities, people, our neighbors, even our members, our families who are suffering, who needs to replace some furnishing and some equipment in their homes, in their work. Lord, help them. Lord, we lift up to you families right now that needs comfort and peace. Peter Roche's family, Butler family, Rose and family, Alma Brodel family, Bill Sinkowitz family. We lift up to you the media. We leave up to you, Lord God, that they might say two stories, two sides of the coins. Help us to hear the truth. Help us to understand. Help us to have wisdom, not to judge. Help us to have wisdom and knowledge to reach out to them and and help them and not to judge them. Help us. Help us to be true followers of Jesus Christ in our word, in our deeds, in our actions. Help us to be more like you every day. Continue to mold us 
according to your likeness. Correct us and transform us to live more like Jesus each day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please join me for the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. That as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, may we hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture, please rise for the scripture lesson, which is taken from James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18, chapter 4, 1 through 3. <laughs> Are any of you wise or sensible? Then show it by living right and being humble and wise in everything you do. But if your heart is full of bitter jealousy and selfishness, don't brag or lie to cover up the truth. That kind of wisdom doesn't come from above. It is earthy, earthly and selfish and comes from the devil himself. Whenever people are jealous or selfish, they cause trouble and do all sorts of cruel things. But the wisdom that comes from above leads us to be pure, friendly, gentle, sensible, kind, helpful, genuine, and sincere. When peacemakers plant seeds of peace, they will harvest justice. Why do you fight and argue with each other? Isn't it because you are full of selfish desires that fight to control your body? You want something you don't have, and you will do anything to get it. You will even kill, but you still cannot get what you want, and you won't get it by fighting and arguing. You should pray for it. Yet even when you do pray, your prayers are not answered because you pray just for selfish reasons. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Miss Jane. Our lesson uh, for three weeks, last week, this week, and next week is about the simple, three simple rules of John Wesley. Uh, before we continue, I would like to welcome uh, our friends that are here, uh, all of you, and also uh, Ati Ching and Kui Ernie, thank you for, for being here. There are members from way back from the Philippines, 1998, they were, and um, our friend there, Milo, is it Milo or Hedwig? We acknowledge you at the back. We are a friendly church. So uh, October, second week of October, we are going to bless uh, our, our pets again. Uh, as we bless people, we bless our pets because they are like our family members. So last week, our topic was do no harm. It's like do, do not do anything. Do no harm. Don't, don't harm. Don't speak bad. Don't do bad. Don't act bad. Don't do anything. It's stop sign. But now, do good. Go. Red. Okay? So what are the things that we are going to do? There is a story. I think I, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, I think I used this before. It is um, about a violinist. The audience was awed when the world-famous violinist announced before the concert that he would be playing one of the world's most expensive violins. His composition was played brilliantly. The master violinist played the number without a mistake. The audience was thrilled. Then the musician took the instrument and smashed it on the floor. The strings and wood flew across the stage. The audience was shocked and assumed that the violinist had gone mad. Are you crazy? Until he explained that the violin he had just destroyed 
was a cheap imitation. Then, picking up the expensive instrument, he began to play again, and amazingly, most people could not tell the difference. The quality of the instrument was secondary to the skill of the musician. It is with those of us who would live the good life, the beauty of a kind deed does not rely on the physical, financial, or social well-being of the individual who performs it. The master, God, can take ordinary instruments like you and me and produce beautiful music with our lives. So sometimes we say, oh, I'm just a cheap violin. violin. But God will use us no matter, uh, no matter what according to our deeds. Good deeds done in humility come from heavenly wisdom. Our focus statement is God's wisdom is pure, peace-loving, gentle, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. How can you tell if someone is living the good life? Look at the people who surround him or her. Are those people smiling, happy, and content? Are their lives richer because of your friendship? How is it with us? How is it with you? How is it with me? After our friends have spent an evening with us, do they come away feeling better about themselves? Have their spirits been lifted up? Their thoughts elevated? Have the words we have spoken improved the quality of their lives? And to what influences do we expose our life? What are the things that influence us every day? What are the songs that we hear? What are the movies that we see? Who is playing on the strings of our hearts? With what wisdom are we filling our minds? You know, I will, I will uh, confess. Yeah, I, I, I will confess that there was a time back when the K, K drama was so uh, K, yeah, K soap of opera. Like, uh, what you call that? I, I, Sunshine, Mr. Sunshine, and a lot of other Korean stories. I love them. And it gives me good, good feeling. But sometimes, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I could not let my, my mind uh, out of it. You know, I, when I see the first episode, I have to do the second. I have to do the third. I have to finish it. And, and there came a time that it actually gets most of my time. And I was so burned out. And I said, this is not helping me. This is not a good exposure. This is not a good um, source of uh, wisdom. This is not a good influence. So, you know, I, I'm not saying that it is bad, but we have to control ourselves. Greatest victory is the conquest of oneself. Sometimes the battle is within. So we have to master ourselves. Like, for example, the announcers they modulate their voice you see my voice is like alto in, on mic but my real voice is sometimes like this so we have to control how we live our lives where we get the influence in our lives what songs we sing who the people we talk to 
The quality of our lives depends upon the source of our wisdom. Are we influenced and led by the wisdom that comes down from heaven or the message that is earthly and spiritual and of the devil? Three simple rules. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. I would like to uh, borrow David Gusick's commentary on James chapter 3. Uh, it is a, in, in the website Enduring Word. He said, the demonstration of a living faith in the presence of wisdom is found in James 3. In verse 13, I'm using the New King James Version. It says, wisdom, who is wise and understanding among you? So this is James asking, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So wisdom shows us how to do good works. Who is wise and understanding among you? At the beginning of James 3, the author addressed those who were teachers. Now we are going, before we are saying that teachers are just the preachers. Now, James and a lot of Bible scholars are saying that teachers has a wider circle. Teachers, parents are teachers. They teach their children. Grandparents are teachers. Would you believe that one Bible scholar said Hitler was a teacher? Ferdinand Marcos was a teacher. So anyone who talks and influence other and teach other is a teacher. So now we are making this draw the circle wide. So we are all teachers. So at the beginning of James, he said the author addressed those who were teachers and who wants to be a good disciple and Christians. There he told who are teachers, Sunday school teachers, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, I think everybody of us, how they should talk. You know, the first beginning of James, we discuss about the tongue. The tongue can light a forest wildfire. Here he speaks about how teachers should live. James addresses the person who is wise and understanding. The word Sophia, Sophia, Sophie, it means wisdom or wise, was the technical term among the Jews for the teacher, the scribe, or the rabbi. It appears that the author is still speaking to those who would be teachers. Here it is not what they say that he is concerned with, but rather how they live. Who is wise? Let him show by good conduct. Wisdom is not mere head knowledge. Okay? So we have to understand wisdom is not just head knowledge. Real wisdom and understanding will show in our lives by our good conduct. In this sense, wisdom and understanding are like faith. They are invisible. So you cannot tell by looking at somebody, oh, you are wise. Wisdom is invisible. Like faith, it is an inner quality. If a person considers himself to be wise or understanding, it is fair to expect that this invisible inner quality would show itself in regular life. Here, James told us how to judge if a person really is wise and understanding. James is not saying to judge, but how can we tell if a person is wise? His works are done in the meekness of wisdom. True wisdom is also evident by its meek manner. Those who do their good works in a way designed to bring attention to themselves show they lack true wisdom. Meekness or protest, protest is gentleness. 
but not a passive gentleness growing out of weakness or resignation or falling back or risk quitting. It is not meekness. It is an active attitude of deliberate acceptance. Meekness is accepting our true self. Meekness is accepting if we had done wrong. Meekness is accepting that we cannot do it by ourselves. The character of earthly wisdom is shown in verses 14 to 16. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. So, in verse 14 to 16, it, it, this is the New King James Version. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking. Bitter envy and self-seeking. These are the opposite of the meekness of wisdom mentioned in verse 13. These words actually refer to someone who has a critical contentious, fight-provoking manner. You know, sometimes if we are bitter, if there is something in our hearts that we are uh, taking care of, you know, we are growing in our hearts. Now, sometimes there are, some people hurt us. Somebody hurt us, you know. Okay, we say we forgive them. But then every time that people, that person say something, it's as if it's always attacking us. It's as if it's always against us. And the bitterness grows. And, oh, he's just like that. He's just like that. He's just doing this to spite me. You know, um, that was the year 2013 when, you know, when, when we had a problem. Uh, my my problem with uh, my son's uh, family, and every time, you know, I would pray every day for forgiveness and Lord, I don't want this feeling because every time he does something, he did something, I would feel that it is for me, and I would be mad. Well, he's like that. He's he did this to spite me. He did this to make me angry. You know, and that's the truth. In our lives, if we have bitterness, everything that that person does, it's as if against us. And we take it personally. And that is bitterness. Bitterness. It's out, it is out of keeping with the temper of bitter jealousy and rivalry. It is self-ambitious, promoting division, and making others angry too. You know, if we're angry with others, we want our family to be angry with him too. We would tell our story so we can get their feelings and all our family would be angry with him. You know, I, I don't want to tell anything if I am sad or, you know, if I feel something negative, I will never tell it to my mother. I will not. You know why? My mother will be more angry than me. That, that's what family is. You know, when we tell something to our family, they get to be angry because that we have a relationship with him. But, you know, I always tell this to uh, young couples that I am... Um, counseling, if something is going on between you two as a couple, never ever tell it to your family. Never. Because you know why? They will have a negative perception of your spouse. You love your spouse, you're having good relationship with your spouse, and your family is still angry. And that's the truth. So never try with meekness to solve and work it out. 
if you have something, you know, if you have negative feelings to a person and you feel that it's just attacking you, talk. Be courageous enough to talk to them personally. Personally. And ask them. You know, sometimes I would say, you know, I feel that. And some of you, some of you are, are, are I hear that. I, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. I think I feel it is okay to feel angry. It is okay to feel bad. It is okay. Feelings are natural for human beings. We have to deal with it. If we will not ac accept our feelings, it will be planted in our hearts and it might be the bitterness that will grow. If we have something that we heard that offended us, talk to that person nicely and say, you know what, when you said this, I felt that you were trying to hurt me. And, and you know, the, the book of Anatomy of Peace, I hope that you can read it. It's very helpful because in the true peace is really having a good relationship with yourself and with other people, trying to understand. Because sometimes, you know, I, I will give you a very good example. Yesterday, I asked my husband because of the memorial service. Dear, uh, get some cookies. You know, the United Methodist women brought a lot of uh, refreshment for uh, Bill Sinkowitz Memorial. And then I said, uh, we buy, buy more so that just in case, you know, I'll put it in the refrigerator and that just in case we don't have enough, then we can put in. You know, it's like the good wine first and then the cheaper wine uh, to serve later. And so... He said, what cookies, dear? You know, the one that you uh, got $5 from Acme? What are you saying? Is it, you know, if I am going to, to interpret what you said, he said, I'm going to buy Oreo, Chips Ahoy. Those are cookies for me. And then I said, no, no, the one that you, the, with the oatmeal and with nice, with sprinkles, something like, oh, oh, that. Sometimes we don't do that. We don't clarify. And, and, you know, and it's very, very often that it's happening to us. We don't cl clarify. And it is also my meekness sometimes. You know, sometimes I don't clarify. But this is something that we need. One, uh, meekness of wisdom means true wisdom to understand, understand the other person. In a verse 15, it says, do not boast and lie against the truth. Anyone who shows bitter envy and self-seeking should not deceive anyone, especially themselves, about how wise they are. They show wisdom that is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Their wisdom is more characteristics of the world, the flesh, and the devil than of God. This wisdom that James referred to was not really wisdom at all. It is the wisdom claimed by the would-be teachers of whose lives contradict their claims. Such wisdom evaluates everything by worldly standards and makes personal gains highest goal. So wisdom from heaven is understanding, reaching out. Wisdom from earth is being selfish thinking of your own sake and not clarifying. Earthly, having this life only in view. Sensual, it is like the violent attitude of the animals. Demonic, inspired by demons and maintained in the soul by their indwelling place influence. It creates confusion in every evil thing. This is the fruit of human earthly wisdom. The wisdom of the world, the flesh, and the devil may be able to accomplish things, but always with the ultimate fruit of confusion and division. Earthly wisdom creates division, confusion, hate. Godly wisdom 
Godly wisdom creates unity. Reconciliation and good relationship. Verse 17 and 18. Wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. By the wisdom that is from above, God's wisdom also has fruit. So, we, so wisdom, we say, is invisible, like faith. But it has fruit. James here defined exactly what he meant by the meekness of wisdom. First, pure. The wisdom is Pure. The reference is not sexual purity, but to the absence of any sinful attitude or motive. When we do something, let us ask, what is my motive in doing this? What is our motive? What, what is in our heart when we do something? We should ask every time. This wisdom and then is then peaceable. This, this is one of the great words of character description in the New Testament. In the Septuagint, Septuagint, it is used mostly God's disposition as a king. He is gentle and kind. Although in reality, he has every reason to be stern and punitive toward men in their sin. If God will be just to us, I tell you, if we will re receive what we deserve, we are not going to heaven. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. This wisdom is gentle. The man who is epicus is the man who knows when it is actually, actually wrong to apply the strict letter of the law. He knows how to forgive when strict justice gives him a perfect right time to condemn. It is impossible to find an English word to translate this quality. Matthew Arnold called it sweet reasonableness. And it is the ability to extend to others the kindly consideration we would wish to receive ourselves. This is very much seen in a parental attitude towards their children. You know, sweet reasonableness. Sometimes, our children, you know, deserves, you know, sometimes our children really deserve something. But sweet reasonableness, you know, sometimes, you know, Nicole's not here, some would do something that, why, you know? And then I would just, Nicole, I would hug her and tell her, please don't do that again. Is bad. You know, all of us, every day, all of us are growing. We are not perfect. There is no perfect person. We need to work it out with each other. Not having bitterness, not having pride, but being gentle and having sweet reasonableness. It is the ability to extend kind consideration to all people. The wisdom is willing to yield, you know, willing to yield. What does that mean? We see yield sign always when we drive. We see yield sign. Yield means, wait. When you're on the yield sign and it's uh, merging, what do you need to do? You have to, to wait and look. There's car coming and you have to wait. That's his right. You have to wait. But you know what's happening now? When you go to the third park, Garden State Park, where there is a yield sign there, and the person, the driver, would go faster than the lane here. That is not yielding. Yielding is waiting. We need to have that wisdom, willing to yield, not stubborn or inflexible or strict. When we say, this is how it's supposed to be, 
If you don't do it this way, you are wrong. That is not willing to yield. It is the opposite of uh, stiff and unbending. Eupetus, or willing to yield, mean easy to persuade, not in the sense of being weak, but in the sense of not being stubborn and of being willing to listen, to reason, and to appeal. Listen. Reason out. Even God said to Job, reason with me. Come on, talk with me. What do you think? What do you... We have to reason out to each other. Nobody is higher or uh, lower than us. We have to reach, reason out, hear each other out, and be willing to yield. I am, please, me as your person, if you want to talk to me, I am willing to yield. I am willing to reason out with you. Please, let us talk if you need something to tell me. Because sometimes we just don't know. We don't know the feelings. They are invisible. We have to say it. Because I might have hurt you so deep and I wouldn't even know it. So we have to talk, understand each other, reason out to each other. And if somebody hurt us, said something that hurt us, talk to that person lovingly. This wisdom is full of good fruits. This wisdom can be seen by the fruit it produces. It isn't just the inner power to think and talk about things the right way. It is full of good fruits. Wisdom is without partiality, without judging, either a curious inquiring into the faults of others to find matter for disapproval. Sometimes we talk to people to tell them you are wrong. What the book is telling us, what the Bible is telling us, talk to that person to move forward, not to condemn, not to say, oh, this is what you did, you did, you did, you did. You're wrong, 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 wrong. What James is telling us, reason, how can we make this right? Let us work to make this right. Let us work for the glory of God and the edification of the church. If we, we think somebody's doing wrong, let us talk to them. You know, let us talk to them. This wisdom is without hypocrisy, without pretending to be what it is not, acting always in its own character, never working under a mask, seeking nothing but God's glory and using no other means to attain it than those of his own prescribing. These last two words, without partiality and without hypocrisy, rule out the habit of using speech to half reveal and half conceal the mind of the speaker who has something, as we say, at the back of their minds all the time. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. This fruit is like a seed that will bear fruit at it, as it is sown by those who make peace. The fruit of righteousness, either the fruit we bring forth, which is righteousness, righteousness itself, or the fruit we reap, which is reward of righteousness, is eternal life. Far from being theoretical and speculative, James' concept of wisdom is thoroughly practical. Even though wisdom is invisible, it should be practical. We should practice. Practice it so that it can be seen that we are wise. It is the understanding and attitude that result in true piety and godliness. We do good because of godly wisdom, for the benefit of God's kingdom and not of personal gain. Personal gain cannot be the sole motivation for doing good. True good comes from a right spirit. Good, listen, good cannot be good unless it is good for all people. Good cannot be good if it's just for a personal gain. Good cannot be good unless it is good for all 
people. Wisdom helps us to discern what is good. When we look at the things we do, we need to think about, is this good for all or is this just good for me? Think about the greater good, something beneficial for everyone versus the common good, keeping the peace, doing nothing. We have to do something. Last week, do no harm. Don't do anything bad, negative. Now, the simple rule of life is saying us, do something. Do good and not for your own self, but for the benefit of a lot of people, especially the people of God. Think about the greater good, something beneficial for everyone versus something for yourself. Think about the intention behind the action. What's your intention in doing this? Both are good, but the greater good really comes out of the kingdom mentality versus the good that is just trying to maintain the status quo. God's wisdom is pure, peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. Wesley's second general rule is do good. What's the first rule of uh, simple rules? Do no harm. Can you repeat? Do no harm. The second rule is do good. Do no harm, do good. And the third uh, week, we will study, stay in love with God. The way we approach other people is meant to be from a place of gentleness, purity, and selflessness. When so much of the world tells us to approach others with the idea of what can they do for me? In the general rules, Wesley emphasizes that doing good is not about receiving praise or getting ahead in the world. Rather, it is about faithfulness to the gospel of Jesus who gave up everything for humankind. People are to do good. Christians are to do good. We are to do good by running the race which is set before us. Denying ourselves and taking up our cross daily. Taking up our cross daily. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I would like to ask Sophie to uh, get our Cecilia for our reception of members. And I would like to request uh, uh, a leader from the church. Our chair, council chair is not here and the lay leader. So can we request the SPRC chair to uh, help us receive our members, new members. If you will look at the back of the insert, there is a question. Are you a member of our church? Have you been accepted or received as a member? Um, if not, I want to ask if uh, we can talk about it. This is a good time for you to consider the possibility of joining the church. Membership in the United Methodist Church is open to all baptized Christians. If you're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We do not limit our membership to those who subscribe to a particular creed. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, believe in the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures and intend to lead a Christian life, we invite you to become a member of our congregation. If you are not presently a member and would like to know more about membership, please speak to one of our clergies. You can talk to me, you can talk to Pastor Don, you can talk to Pastor Hemi, Pastor Dr. Kumar, Pastor Bill Noll. You can talk to them if you want to be members. Now we are going to receive the Fukui family. As before we receive them, while we're waiting for them, Cecilia Fukui has been, you've known her and we started the um, Hispanic ministry. Uh, she has been uh, helping us with the Hispanic ministry. And now uh, I uh, requested her to help us with the children because the, uh, she's inviting uh, Hispanic children I and she speaks 
English and Spanish. And I told her, can you help us with the children? And she is uh, very much willing to do that because she has uh, Emily and Charlie B. So um, she wants her children to grow knowing God. She wants her children to know how to live in a Christian life. So, and um, Charlie Fuque, the father is here. Also, he was a Methodist in Carney. We want to acknowledge that. And Miss Maria. Maria. Um, we would like to request um, Emily. Uh, you can sit there. We are going to accept them. Emily, can you tell her to sit uh, in front? Yeah. She wants to be accepted too. Uh, yes. Sit there. And uh, we would like to request Cecilia to uh, Neil, Charlie B, Emily. Yeah, we are accepting you, but uh, we still need the confirmation. Emily, can you kneel? Do you have the... I am sorry for the Zoom um, participants because they said that if you don't use the mic, they will never hear us. They would not uh, hear us. So Christian friends, the church is of God and will be preserved to the end of time for the conduct of worship and the due administration of God's word and sacraments the maintenance of Christian community and discipline, the teaching of believers and the conversion of the world. All people of every age and station stand in need of the means of grace which the church alone supplies. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church, incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. Through the confirmation and reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. These persons, Charlie, Cecilia, Charlie B, 
and Emily stand before us has been baptized and confirmed and stand ready to unite with our congregation of Christians. Now I ask you, do you renew the solemn vow and promise that was made in your name at your baptism? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life? Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? Do you promise to keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life as faithful members of Christ's holy church? Do you promise, according to the grace God gives you, to be loyal to the United Methodist Church and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I do. Brothers and sisters, let us welcome. Please stand, Charlie, and uh, face the congregation. Uh, please uh, be in the front here, center. Carrying our cross means following God's will in our lives. Please uh, give everybody one. Carry your cross daily. Let us pray for them. Wonderful Lord Jesus, we, we give you thanks and praise for these uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Lord, uh, for bringing them in this direction. Uh, this is your doing, and we thank you for this family. They are very precious in your sight. And Lord, we, we pray that you watch over them and protect them uh, all, all the days of their lives. And you have something, you're already doing something in their lives. And uh, we pray that you'll continue to do that and even more as time goes on. May they be witnesses for you. There's so many people around us who need to know you. So help these folks in their walk with you to grow in grace and to be so filled with your spirit and your love and, and your word. that They can't help but share the good news with other people. Help all of us to do that, Lord. And we'll give you the thanks and the praise, the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and your care, Charlie, Cecilia, Charlie B, and Emily Fuquay, whom we this day recognize as new members of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Congregation. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Charlie is a first responder and a police officer in the immigration. So when you see him in the gate, uh, in the, uh, Newark or Pennsylvania, the airport, just look for him. If you have trouble. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You may sit down and we will continue with our service.
Lord, we come to you today to honor you in your house as we present our tithes, offering, and offerings to you. Please join in the offertory prayer. Gracious God, grant us the grace to be extravagant in gifts we give to you. Help us to be wise and just how we live with the resources we keep. Guide us in the way to lives that bear the fruit that is pleasing to you. Lives full of mercy and compassion. Fill us with envy and lead us away from you. Be brought near to you. We pray in the love and hope of Jesus, the Savior. Amen. Our closing hymn, Blessed Insurance, is found on page 369 of the United Methodist Hymnal.
Let us pray. Lord, you know us. You know our hearts and minds. You know that some of us are celebrating our lives and we are thankful. And some of us are still grieving for the loss of our loved ones, our friend. And some of us, Lord God, are are in need of healing, are in need of your mercy. Some of us asking for your guidance Lord continue to to embrace us with your love continue Lord to, to help us navigate this life all of us have battles every day challenges, trials sickness weakness and Lord, we want, to, we want to continue to serve you. We want to continue to be used by you. Help us, Lord God, as we heard your word to do good. Do good to each other. Being kind, loving, forgiving, understanding. And accepting each other. May we continue to embrace each other as you embrace us. Lord, help us. Help us every day in our lives. You know, each and every one. You know, you know if we are in need financially, physically, Lord God, if we are sick. Heal us. If we are grieving, comfort us and give us peace. If we are celebrating and praising you and thanking you, Lord, continue to bless us. And right now, we just ask for your blessing. You have continuously showed and modeled love in action. Help us to be doers of your word. We acknowledge being doers does not earn your love, but rather expresses the love you are growing within us so that others might experience the liberty and freedom that comes through a saving relationship with you. Help us to be willing to do no harm 
to do good and stay in love with you by your grace and mercy. May we go forward in a way that leads to new life and a deeper faith, not just for us, but for all we meet. And now let us receive the benediction. By God's amazing grace, we are the body of Christ. And because of that, let us go into the world imitating Christ in purity, peace, gentleness, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, holding to the good, honoring all of God's children, loving and serving the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Let us go knowing that our mighty and victorious God will never let us go. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you so much. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please join us downstairs for the lunch fellowship. And thank you for the great music, Mr. Dan. Please join us downstairs for the uh, fellowship.